Hi, I'm Rich from Inside HPC. We're here at SC11 at the Wham Cloud booth. I'm here with Robert Reed. Robert, you're the manager of the group that's putting out these new software products at Wham Cloud. First one is Chroma. What is Chroma all about? Chroma is about making Lustre accessible to, to users who, who are not PhDs or rocket scientists, which traditionally have been needed to, to manage a Lustre file system. So Chroma allows mortals to, to run a Lustre file system. So it's more than just a GUI then? Yeah, it's a lot more than just a GUI. I mean, it has a GUI, it's the pretty face, but what's really cool about Chroma is this, this uh, deep tool that we've built, which the GUI interacts with, which manages all the aspects of a Lustre file system. Integrated with the storage, with the different components of Lustre, and it's aware of all the dependencies and relationships between, between all of those aspects of the system. So Lustre had this reputation as being, you know, rocket science difficult to administer. Is that the problem you were tackling when you put Chroma together? That's the primary problem we're, we're attacking first with Chroma. It's, to, it's so we don't need the rocket scientists and you can to manage the Lustre file system. So it's for a broader market adoption of Lustre. And this is a, a 1.0 release? Is that what we announced this week? or what? what, what? Uh, well, this is a, a technology preview of what, we'll, what our, of what our 1.0 will look like uh, when we're done early next year. And so this is Chroma. This is the, the first screen you see when you open up Chroma. This is a dashboard showing a, kind of a high-level view of the different metrics we're capturing for uh, all the various file systems. Here you see the file system space usage. Uh, currently, there's only one file system configured here, so we're only seeing you know, the, the space and the inodes free for, for one file system. Number of connected clients. Uh, the CPU and server memory graphs for uh, the servers that are associated with this file system. Uh, reads versus writes, and this is all writes at the moment. Uh, the various metadata operations happening on the system. Uh, and this is an overview of, the, of the, uh, the reads and writes happening for all the OSTs, and this would be the different OSTs identified by different colors. This is our configuration screen, so we're seeing the, the configuration of a particular file system called WAMFS, and again here's an overview of the usage the, you know, the current utilization in the file system, the different objects here in the file system, the MGS, uh, the metadata server, and the object storage targets. There's just two currently. Do you want to do you want to add one? Sure. Okay. So we have two object storage targets currently in this file system, and we can add a new one really easily. So this is a list of all the volumes that we've discovered on the different servers that are currently uh, being managed by Chroma, and this is a disk. This disk is currently uh, shared in two different servers, so this, the fact that uh, this disk is, supports HA has been detected by Chroma, and we're going to, uh, and it's these, these two different servers, and we're going to be able to, uh, with one click, set up, not just set up the device and an OST on this disk, but also set up the failover configuration for this disk between these two servers. So the disk is being uh, formatted now in the background, and uh, that'll happen over time. Let's take some time. While we're, uh, well, well, actions like this are happening in the background, actually the GUI is still usable. You can click to different areas uh, while it's happening. So we can go and look at the, uh, the usage, utilization of the file system, the current graphs. Meanwhile, you can see here by this uh, activity icon that something is running and it's configuring that OST. Question, Robert, is that something that they have to do on a continual basis or is this like a set up once, run, and leave it alone? Well, yeah, think? typically you set up your file system once uh, and then you'd only do something like adding an OST uh, later on if, if you needed to extend your file system by adding more storage. Uh, either for more space or for more bandwidth. So this OST is completed now. It's it's got a name uh, to you know for this file system. It's been added to the file system and it's online, or it will be soon. You can see it's still active. Um, and you can see here that this primary, and secondary servers have been configured, uh, and we're just waiting for it to start on the primary. Oh, so it's uh, finished configuring. Uh, we just haven't detected that it started on that server. So waiting. And with the refresh, we can see that it's indeed on, on the primary server.